Hey, how's it going? It's Peter from the Film Scoring Department. Uh, today I'm going to lay out a cue. I'm working in Logic and I'm using video. I'm using a QuickTime video with a timecode burn-in. I'm assuming you have that and you know how to import that and synchronize it. If you haven't done that, uh, look in the description of this video. There's a link to another video where I get things set up to do this. The three things I'm going to cover are making a creative change of tempo, uh, making a meter change in order to synchronize a measure with a picture event, and then making a small change of tempo, uh, almost inaudible change of tempo, to align the downbeat of a measure exactly with a picture event. So before I get going, let me just do a couple things to just show you how I'm set up here really quick. Uh, I like to go to the view menu in Logic and select customize control bar and display. And then in here I just select custom. Um, what that's going to do, if you look up, that's going to show you uh, where uh, it's going to show you the SMPTE display. By the way, if uh, if that's showing more numbers on your screen than it is in mine, uh, mine's showing hour, minute, seconds frame. Yours might also show subframe. You can you can get rid of the subframe number which you don't need by going to the Logic Pro X menu item and selecting preferences and then selecting display. Display time as. Choose the one that says without subframes. That'll clean up that view a little bit while you're there. Oh, while you're up here Check out key commands, uh, edit, key commands, edit. You can see under the global commands section, what I've done uh, for rewind one frame and forward one frame, I've mapped that to my computer left and right keyboard, uh, the Q computer keyboard left and right buttons just as an easy way to navigate one frame at a time while I'm looking for synchronization points. I do that. Also, I will be using up here the uh, list editor to uh, get to the marker tab and the tempo tab in a little while, but for now I'm going to collapse this. Uh, you need some global tracks in order to do this, and that's located over here. This button shows them, um, and you may need to control click as I do right now. Navigate to configure global tracks. That's right click also if you have the right kind of mouse to do it. You're going to need to show a marker track. You don't need this arrangement track. Um, signature, that's for, that's for meter changes, and we'll take a tempo track too. Speaking of tempo, let's click up here in the display, double click up here and just enter a good base tempo for your project. Mine is 60. You, yours might be different. That's what I have for a base tempo. And the first thing I want to do is a creative tempo change. Tempo change is just expressive and musical and you're supposed to hear it that way. In my case, I want to have at the end of the first phrase, I want to have a retard. You know, a little retardando just to kind of make it, make it not feel like it's playing back on a click, you know. Um, so I'm going to have measure 8 contain a retard that's audible. I like to use, the. you could use, um, you probably know that you could grab a pencil or something right here and just start clicking in that track and getting changes of tempo and that's fine. That's easy and obvious. I, I actually like to go and work in the list editor so I can get a little more control over this and get just, just the tempo change that I want. Um, I'm going to navigate to the beginning of measure 8, select the tempo tab here, and hit the plus symbol to add a new tempo anchor right there in measure 8. I haven't changed the tempo here, it's, it, it just inserts a, a sort of an anchor right there in downbeat of measure 8. And I'm going to do the same thing on beat 3 of that measure, exact same thing, I'm navigating my playback head there, I'm hitting the plus symbol in the tempo list. And then finally I'm going to do the same thing on beat 4. Hit the plus symbol. 
Now I can collapse the list editor for a moment and zoom in here and do a little work right inside of measure 8. This segment here between beat 3 and beat 4, if I just select it or click on it and drag it down, it actually displays the tempo I'm dragging it down to here in the corner. Now of course that's not that's not a retardando, that's just that now that's just beat 3 being slower than everything else. Uh, But it does give me the, the control now. If I, if I can click on this corner, this top corner right here, and drag this to the left, I get to shape a nice retardando here. And it's allowed me to have the pickup note going into bar 9 be at the, uh, the ah tempo, 60 beats a minute, the resuming tempo just like the way conductors do, just, just the way it's very natural, the way you would play it. All right, there's a creative tempo edit. Um, there's a picture event I want to draw your attention to up here, um, about 30 seconds ahead. It's around 43.07. Let's jump up there. It's a cut. Yeah, here it is. I navigate up to this. There's a cut uh, to a long shot right there. This is landing. If we, if we look here at measure 23, it's kind of right in the middle of measure 23. In fact, a way to keep track of where it is right now, if I go back to the list editor up here and select the marker window, if you go to the options tab, create without rounding. It's important that you choose without rounding so you get an accurate marker here that's directly on this frame. I just put a marker in there. We can name this marker, well, we can name it for what it is. It's a cut to a long shot. Cut to LS. And we can control click on it and lock it to its empty position because we're about to change the meter in order to get this thing to line up with the downbeat of measure 24. And I don't want the marker itself um, to actually move in relationship to the video. I want it locked to the video. Um, what I, I, it'll sort of look like the marker moved because the marker will now be lined up with measure 24 if I do this right. But what I'm actually doing is just making a measure earlier in the queue shorter by changing the meter. Um, let's go there. Let's see. Well, I could simply just navigate to measure 22 and then using the signature track over here, there's a plus symbol on the right side of it over here. Click there. I'm going to insert a measure of 2-4 right there. And then if I navigate to the next measure, measure 23, and change it back to 4-4, four, four, signature, 4-4. Four, four. Now what's happened, we have that marker cut to long shot. Now that, that's arriving pretty pretty darn close to that cut. If I just play from here, you can actually see pretty much right on the downbeat of 24, we see that cut. All right, so that's a way of using meter to synchronize with a picture event. We can also use tempos to do the same thing. There's a picture event later on. Uh, this is around 43, 38, 21 in this video. Of course, your video is different. Let's see. Yeah. If I just advance from this long shot here, just a few more frames. There we are. There's a cut. This close up. This lands. Well, it's in measure 31. It's landing. It's, the, it's landing just before measure 32. Uh, I could have the music go a little faster up to this point, and it would cause all these, these first 31 measures to have gone by a little bit quicker, and then, and then get this cut to coincide with the downbeat of measure 32. So I'll work similarly. I'll go over here to this, this uh, marker list under options, choosing create without rounding, so it's a very accurate marker. I'm going to uh, edit this to say cut close-up. 
remembering now to control click on it and choose lock to SMPTE position. We always want it locked to the same position on the video. I can work in the tempo track here. Um, one thing I can do is put an anchor tempo earlier, maybe around where that last change was. Let's say measure 25. So we don't affect anything that's happened before this. We always work beginning to end when we're changing tempos and meters so that the changes we've already made at the beginning of the cue are not disrupted by the changes we make at the end. I'm parked here at measure 25. I'm in the tempo uh, edit list. I'm just going to hit the plus symbol here and get a new tempo at measure 25. It's not really a change of tempo, just an anchor. And I scoot back up to where that cut is. I want to make this change so that the tempos change between there and here and that this marker lines up with measure 32. I need to jump back to the marker window for just a second to get the, that SMPTE time again. You can change this view to say show event position length as time. I can see the, the marker, the cut, is actually at 4338.21. It's a number I gotta remember, 4338.21. Back in the tempo window, with my, uh, my playback head positioned right at measure 32, I can put a new tempo in, and I can type in the time 43, 38, 21. And this is going to allow Logic to change the tempo of starting at measure 25. If you watch this spot here, it's going to change the tempo of measure 25 to be a little bit quicker so that this now lines up. And you can see it changed the tempo to starting at measure 25 to 61.1. And now you can see that this marker lines right up with the downbeat of bar 32. That's not a tempo change you can really hear, but it does serve the purpose now that this is all in sync. Watch as I play through the measure and the downbeat lands right with the cut. The last thing I'm going to do is put a marker at the music out point for this cue. Go back to the markers window. Um, I know that the music out point is supposed to be 4507.15. So let me just navigate directly there. And place a marker there using options, create without rounding. Name this music out, MX out. Can control click on it and lock it to this empty position. It looks like it's a little ways into measure 54. Uh, if, if measure 53 was slower, it would take longer to pass by, and it actually then the, then the downbeat of measure 54 would line up perfectly with this marker. So I can do the same kind of a thing. Uh, I can navigate my playhead to measure 53. In the tempo window, just add a marker there, maintaining our old tempo. Jump to measure 54 and add another one there. This time entering the time that we're heading for, the music out time, 4507.15. And Logic finds a new slower tempo just for measure 53 and lines up the music out time perfectly on the downbeat of measure 54.